Hey guys, this is Andy from Mobile Must Have. In this video, we're going over one of the coolest new accessories in the Starlink space called the Trio Flat Mount. Now, this is a super cool accessory that is new to the Mobile Must Have store called the Trio Flat Mount. Now, this is designed for the Gen 3 Starlink antenna, the one that has the kickstand. This replaces where the kickstand is currently mounted in, so now you can mount your antenna flat on basically the top of any surface. This really can open up the way you use your Starlink antenna if you have that Gen 3 version, as you can basically kind of permanently mount it to a surface if you want to, and it's not forced to be in this current portable state. What we really like about this particular mount is its durability overall. It's made out of ASA plastic, so it's super strong, holds over 100 pounds on the frame. It's designed to, to operate at high speed, so if you're putting it on top of your vehicle, it will work that way. And it has very flexible mounting options. Uh, I've got one of them on here, but there's a couple overall, which we'll talk about in a minute. Now, this video is going to go over a couple different details about this mount overall. So if you need to go back or want to go forward or look at any particular summaries, I've timestamped everything in the bottom of this video. So feel free to kind of jump ahead if you need to. And really the key thing about this is its flexibility with its mounting options. So let's talk about that real quick. The mounting options come in a couple different flavors. I'm currently sporting the magnet mounts because I was using this on top of my truck and it just basically magneted right to the top of my vehicle. Super easy to use, very slim and low profile as you can see here as I'm holding it. Um, and then it's just one particular option. You also can get basically, puck looks very similar, but has a VHB tape on the bottom. So if you wanted to adhere this to the surface, like the top of an RV, where you have more of that rubber roof, that could be a great option too. Now there's another option, which is a combination of both of those. It's going to basically be the magnetic feet, but they go onto landing feet, landing pads as they call them, that have a VHB. So you'll have four of those pads for each of these magnets. You can stick those to, let's say the top of an RV, top of a plastic like Jeep roof or something like that, or a boat, and then you can adhere this then to those feet. So you're just dealing with those, those little four circular feet on your roof. There's no holes being drilled, there's nothing like that, but you still have the, the benefits of the magnet, being able to stick this down and remove it as many times as you want, um, but you're also not drilling any holes, and it's just, it's very flexible. So I love that particular option if you don't have a magnetic surface already. Now those are great if your surface is relatively flat, but if you have something that's super curved, there's another option for that that has kind of like a pivoting point on this that you can use. And there's also a suction cup mount as well if you want suction cups. But I really do like the magnets with those landing feet if that is something you're looking into. Uh, the last mounting option is really the most basic, which is basically just gonna be bolting it through these particular holes. So there are four holes, which you can see the, the screws in here. You can just screw those directly into any particular surface you want as well. So if you really are just know you're going to go right in or you already have like a custom rack on your roof and do your own custom mount, totally possible. Basically the mount is just going to have an opening here for a bolt and then the mounting options just have the bolt and that mounting option included. But if you wanted to come up with something custom and you wanted to just do a through bolt for that, that is totally possible as well. All of those options are available on the listing page as, as kind of uh, cross sale options. So if you want to learn more about each of those, you can go to the listing page and it kind of explains all of those in detail too. Uh, and we're getting more and more pictures uh, as we can as this is such a new product for us. Now let's talk use cases real quick as I think this has a lot of uh, interesting use cases as I've been playing with this over the last week or so. The most obvious is you can easily put it on top of any vehicle, especially if it has a metal roof. You can put Starlink on there and you can have high speed Starlink internet anywhere that vehicle is. Of course, you're gonna to need to have power to it somehow. I know my truck has a built-in inverter when it's on, but you could run this on one of those remote batteries, you know, that's got inverters built in, or if you've got like an actual solar system like we do, and you have 12 volt power, you can run that on that now. Obviously for RVs, this is interesting because now you can put it right on top of your RV and you can mount this just kind of similar to a high performance one. Um, and you can just kind of mount it on there. It kind of solves this moving Starlink or taking it on and put down on a pole. You can kind of eliminate the whole pole concept altogether as this now is just really easy to flat surface and you can leave it up there. If you mounted this behind like your air conditioning or something where it was reducing a lot of the direct wind, that really too could be interesting to just 
have it up there all the time. The last category that makes this really interesting is marine. So if you have a boat and you're near coastal, uh, you can install this in a lot of different ways. I'm sure you guys can see those options already on top of your boats, whether on top of canopies or just kind of, it depends on your boat. There's so many different options. Um, but you can install this in a lot of different places in the marine aspect to get the Starlink working and stabilized on deck so that you're not constantly moving that around or trying to pin it to anything. Uh, this would keep it connected. There is one thing I want to point out. If you are used to the Gen 3, you have this already, or are, are, are looking in the Gen 3, the Gen 3, when you first set it up, will try to tell you it needs to be aligned accurately to the sky. So when basically when you turn it on, you, you flip the kickstand out, in the app, it has you point the antenna in a certain direction to try and get it to perfectly line up with satellites. And that is for optimum connection according to Starlink. Uh, this obviously you can't do that with, right? Because wherever you're mounting this with and wherever you're parking your vehicle, it's kind of locked in. It's also not at the kickstand um, kind of angle where you're pointing it potentially in that northern direction typically. We've been testing that too just to see if there's really any big impact and have not noticed a huge speed impact if any with it not being uh, perfectly aligned per se on the Starlink app. You will see a warning that the Starlink is not ideally aligned. We saw this a lot with the Gen 2 one too. For those who had modified or taken out basically the arm that allowed it to pivot and turn, uh, while it wasn't optimally you know, angled in a certain direction, it would still work a lot of times. So just because it's gonna come up, I did wanna do a quick, quick comparison between the Gen 3 and the flat mount high performance antenna from Starlink that I have installed on my RV. Now, the Trio flat mount is a great option for mounting. It does solve a lot of the issues. Um, I personally have experienced with the Starlink antenna mounting it here. Um, you can see it's in the middle of the campground space. The kids have kept throwing rocks on it. Like it's not a great experience to just kind of have it out. So putting it up and mounting it away from traffic is great, but it's still not really designed for that that in motion high speed use. We haven't had any issues with it, but if you're really looking for something that can withstand that, um, that is what the high performance dish is all about. It comes with the correct hardware for it. The install kit is very different because it knows it's gonna be in motion, it's gonna be roof mounted, and it's really designed for that application. The other thing too is with the high performance, you don't even need the Starlink router if you're going to a peplink. Right out of the power it comes with what the power module, it comes with Ethan that goes right into the peplink. I've never even installed my Starlink router with the high performance. It just goes directly into the peplink. With this one, you kind of are in this wiring nightmare between the power adapter then into the router and then putting the router in bypass mode then to get it into the peplink. Don't get me wrong, the peplink still makes it better than the Starlink router, but you're still having to do all these extra steps which you completely bypass with the high performance. So the high performance is still gonna be my go-to solution and it's better performance, faster performance than this, better field of view. There's a lot of advantage to that, but if you already have the Gen 3 and you're looking to fix some of the issues you're having with it, the flat mount, the Trio flat mount can be a good option for you. Last part of the video is I just wanted to talk about how to integrate your Starlink into your Peplink so you get the best of both worlds. You get the you get the failover from space if you ever have cellular that knocks out, but if you ever parked under a tree or don't want to move this around, uh, you can have cellular instantly pick up when your when your space internet isn't working either. Um, it, with this Gen 3, it's really pretty easy as they have two LAN ports built into the router itself. So you can just run an ethernet cable right from the Starlink router directly into your Peplink WAN port. And now you basically can use that WAN connection in your, in your dashboard as you would anything else. You can drag and drop it up and down based on if you want it on or not. You can now use it in speed fusion for cellular bonding so you don't have dropouts and all that cool stuff you'd get with a Peplink. So Starlink becomes basically just like another carrier, just one more option to stay connected. You have cell, you have space internet, you have Wi-Fi as WAN. You know, with those Peplinks, it can pick and choose the best one for you. You can bond all those together for ultimate connectivity, lots of different options. Uh, for my particular RV, how I wired this all to work, I've been testing the Gen 3, so I've been keeping it very flexible in its positioning. So I have the cables 
basically running out my water bay. I already had an opening, you know, the water bays are open outside the cabinet. I did have to drill a hole in the top of my water bay to get into my regular basement storage compartment where I had power, and then I had run an ethernet to my peplink. So I have all the Starlink kind of brains in my basement bay next to my water bay. I then run the ethernet out of the water bay into, you know, out to wherever the antenna is. That's how I had it set up for the Gen 2, and then now the Gen 3 that I've been testing. Uh, and the PEP links are always installed where they have been, right behind my TV, inside, uh, very easy access to the roof for my roof antenna installs, and it was just basically running an Ethernet cable to those through the basement. So for me, it was, it was easy. It was a little bit tricky, but it wasn't too complicated. It just took me kind of an afternoon to figure out how to get wires from, from one room to the other. If I was to do a roof install of this, it wouldn't really be that much more challenging. Um, we have Icotech options if you wanted to just leave an Ethernet cable up there for your Starlink to use when it's plugged in into, you know, into that, that installed position. You can have an Ethernet cable up there, run through Icotech, so you don't even have to modify these cables to do it through a watertight cable solution. I would run that down through an existing patch I already have on my roof for solar and for my other Internet cables. And then, honestly, I have power and everything right where my pep links are. That drops right into my pep, pep link cabinet. Now, if you have any additional questions or something I didn't cover, come check out our shorts. We have YouTube shorts. So we're going to be covering more topics on this particular flat mount, showing more of its installs. We're also going to be doing those on Instagram, so you can follow us there. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment on this video or any of the other videos about this, and we'll get back to you. But if you wanted to do something more intimate, why don't you give us a call? We can walk you through some of the great features of these mounts. Um, you can even chat with us if you're more into the, the computer messaging, you can do that too. And we are here to help you with any of your connectivity needs, whether it's this, peplink, antennas, let us know. We're here to help you get connected and have a better connectivity journey overall. Uh, we hope to see everybody here on the road. Thanks guys. Bye.